All right, so the title of this episode has, in some way, shape, or form, been commented on my TikTok countless times, probably on almost every video that I post on TikTok, and that is, what's the deal with Buffalo Trace? That's at least what I'm planning to title this episode as of the recording of it, because people are so emotional about this topic. Like People go back and forth like you would think it's politics. So I wanted to do an episode to talk about what is the deal with Buffalo Trace? Why are some people so obsessed with it? Why would you think that I like it so much? Because most of you who've been listening know that I have been. And why do some people hate it so much? So for those of you who are new here, my name is Chris and I am the host of the Whiskey Noobs podcast. And once again this week, we're talking about Buffalo Trace and all of the debate that somewhat surrounds it, especially in the bourbon drinking, whiskey drinking community on TikTok and on Instagram. People tend to fall on one of two sides. The first side is Buffalo Trace is extremely overhyped and not worth it at all. You shouldn't buy it. The other side is that Buffalo Trace is fantastic. If you see it, you should buy it. I tend to fall on the second side if you don't know that already. But I want to talk about why those two sides exist and also kind of the more complex side of what two of those sides think. A lot of people on the surface fall just in one of those categories, but there are a lot of people, especially those of us who are in the whiskey drinking, bourbon drinking community, especially the content creators who fall on one of those sides for different reasons, not just for the surface value. So that's what I'm going to get into today. And since this isn't a full review episode, I would normally have a mini uh, mystery whiskey review. But since it's a Buffalo Trace episode, I thought let's just drink a little bit of Buffalo Trace. So I'm going to do that right now and give you guys just a couple of flavor notes, which is a great segue into why I like Buffalo Trace. Okay, so I just took a sip of the Buffalo Trace, and I am always reminded when I take a sip of it how good of a whiskey it is. And the reason for that, there's a few things going on that make it such a good whiskey okay the first and I always admit this because this is my bias towards Buffalo Trace is I really like the flavor profile and I find that the flavor profile is approachable to a lot of people and I think that's where it becomes completely hyped if it was just a whiskey that I really really like the flavor of and nobody else really did then nobody would think anything of it but because so many people agree with that profile that's where it starts to become quote unquote overhyped. Now that profile for me has a lot of brown sugar, a lot of vanilla, caramely brown sugariness, very sweet, and that is why I like it so much. Uh, Also on their website they say that it has molasses, I think it says anise, I believe. Uh, There's all kinds of notes that they, they say would be in it, but for me it's strong brown sugar, and I really enjoy that about it. So I think step one is that it has an approachable profile and that's why a lot of people start to enjoy it now on top of that not only is it a good flavor profile it also is pretty easy to drink and for that reason I've always said Buffalo Trace is one of my favorite beginner bourbons because it's just so easy to drink it's 90 proof it's not very harsh it's pretty smooth and that sweet profile combined with the smoothness makes it pretty easy for a beginner to drink and you'll see a lot of people on the other side of the debate say That is what makes Buffalo Trace suck. It's like, oh, it's just a beginner bourbon because beginners like it. That doesn't mean it's just a beginner bourbon. I think it's a fantastic sipping bourbon for the price. And that is my next point is the price. I would argue that Buffalo Trace is very underpriced. I would probably happily pay $35 for a bottle of Buffalo Trace. Now, if it was $35, I'd probably buy it less often. And I'm going to talk about the price a little bit more here at the end. But for what it is, you can get it for $27 near me. I think it's actually $26 before tax. And for $26, it's a great bourbon. There are very few bourbons or whiskeys in general that I enjoy drinking as much as Buffalo Trace in that price range. Now, there are other whiskeys that I like as much or better than Buffalo Trace in that price range. And because of the hype around Buffalo Trace, I'm actually doing a TikTok series about that where I'm comparing any whiskey under $30 to Buffalo Trace side by side and picking a winner. And we've had a few winners that beat Buffalo Trace. So check that out on my TikTok if you don't follow me already and you're not seeing them. It's uh, Whiskey Noobs Podcast on TikTok, at Whiskey Noobs Podcast. Uh, That's the at, but the name is uh, Chris from Whiskey Noobs, I think. I actually don't remember. But uh, the at is at Whiskey Noobs Podcast. You can look it up. And 
you can see some of those battles where there are other great whiskeys. There are some that come very close. There are quite a few ties, and then there are also a couple that actually beat it. And starting probably as of around the airing of this episode, it may not have come out yet, uh, will be March Madness, where I'll be taking all of the top eight bourbons that I compared to Buffalo Trace. I'm going to specifically do bourbons, and I'm going to do a bracket-style setup, and I'm going to see which one comes out as the best. But the moral of the story is that I have had some beat Buffalo Trace that cost less than $30. So I don't want it to make it seem like Buffalo Trace is this complete diamond in the rough that you could never find anywhere else, a total unicorn. That's not the case. There are other whiskeys that are just as good as Buffalo Trace in that price range. The thing is that Buffalo Trace is so good and such a good profile to so many people. Okay. And so there's, all of these other whiskeys that are approximately as good as Buffalo Trace or better, there's a couple that I like better, they don't have all of these traits. They just have that they taste better than Buffalo Trace for the price. But Buffalo Trace gets all of the hype because not only does it taste really good for the price and is really smooth for the price, it also is a preferred flavor profile by a majority of people. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly, but I hope you understand what I mean. When I say it's not like... It could be the best shade of blue ever, and these other whiskeys are the best shade of green ever. But if more people prefer blue just naturally than green, then more people are going to like the blue. Hopefully that makes sense. It's a really loose analogy for what I'm trying to describe here. But that's the case, and I think a lot of people just enjoy that flavor profile that Buffalo Trace has. Now, there's also a couple other things going on here, and the next thing is how hard it is to find, okay? It depends on where you're at. I have a lot of people comment to me, Buffalo Trace isn't even difficult for me to find. I don't know what you're talking about. There are some places where you can find it super easily. Other places you can't find it very easily at all. Ohio is one of those places, which those of you who have been listening know that I'm from Ohio. I live in Ohio. And it's pretty hard to find Buffalo Trace in most of Ohio. And the reasoning for that has to do with the pricing. But the moral of the story is that I get Buffalo Trace for $26 no matter what in Ohio. Our liquor stores can't compete. They can't charge different pricing depending on how rare it is. One of the reasons it makes it so hard to find, but also one of the reasons that I can get it at the good price all of the time. So there's that aspect of it going on where some people have to hunt it and that makes it more exciting as well the fact that you kind of have to hunt it it's really hard to find it and so that also contributes to the hype so once again i just want to reiterate that there are whiskeys out there for the same price or less or maybe just a little bit more that are better than buffalo trace but those whiskeys don't have all of these things that i'm going through and the next thing that none of those whiskeys have that i can think of or most of them do not is the excellent sort of tier system, multiple brand thing that the Buffalo Trace distillery has going on. So if you don't know this already, Buffalo Trace is the bourbon that I'm talking about. It's called Buffalo Trace bourbon, but it's made by the Buffalo Trace distillery. And the Buffalo Trace distillery produces a ton of brands that if you're involved in bourbon, you have most likely heard of. And this leads to people wanting to hunt down all of those brands. So what am I talking about for those of you who don't know? First of all, Benchmark, that is their bottom shelf. And Benchmark 8 is one of the ones that I've compared to Buffalo Trace. It's very similar. Then also, if you've heard of Eagle Rare, if you've heard of E.H. Taylor, Blanton's, W.L. Weller, uh, and Pappy Van Winkle or the Van Winkle Family Reserve, just to name a few, uh, George T. Stagg also. There's a ton. I could probably go on all day. But they have so many really in-demand whiskeys. And so that's a huge aspect of it is that people become fans of the distillery, such as myself. I really like the Buffalo Trace distillery. And the fact that some of those are really hard to find annoys a lot of people, makes them really mad. Like E.H. Taylor, I personally, you, you see how much whiskey I have. I haven't been able to get it yet. But I like that aspect of it. That makes it more fun. It makes it like a scavenger hunt. I'm trying to find these bourbons that I really want. Even if I haven't tried them yet, that part gets a little bit annoying. But especially if I've already tried them, then it's just like, well, now I just want one for my shelf. And now I want to find one so that I can drink it whenever I want. And that's a really fun aspect of it. And so that is another thing that I think really, really generates the hype around it. So now you've got all of these more expensive, harder to find brands under the Buffalo Trace Distillery umbrella that 
are more difficult to find, but Buffalo Trace, the base whiskey, not too hard for most people to find and also very affordable. So now you've got a ton of people who really want this whiskey and that contributes to the hype even more. And so this is where we get to the turning point in my discussion of Buffalo Trace because this is where we're going to see there's all of this hype around it. And I totally get where some, most of the other people, I was going to say some, but most of the other people are coming from. And that is Buffalo Trace bourbon could never live up to the hype that is surrounding it online. If you've never had it and you see people post about it online, myself included, it could never live up to the hype, which is why I try to post. I post a lot about how much I like it, how hard it is to find, but I also try to post pretty consistently about other whiskeys. I'm doing this whole thing about whiskeys that are just as good as Buffalo Trace for the same price because it could never, ever live up to the hype that it has online. And there are a lot of folks, a lot of content creators out there who are what I would consider worse than me because they just contribute to the hype. They never talk about the downsides of it. And so now you've got something that could never live up to the hype that of what it is. It's still a whiskey. It's still going to burn if you've never had bourbon before. It's still not going to taste like pure caramel in your mouth. It's just going to be a whiskey that has caramel notes to it. And so now you've got something that can never live up to the hype that you've seen online. And this is where... In my opinion, most of the second type of person are made. Most of them are made when they think this is going to be a miracle whiskey, and then they buy a bottle of it, and they don't either. Either they don't like it, or they don't think it's anything special at all, and then they're really, really mad about all the hype that surrounds it. And I totally get where those people are coming from, because there's so much hype surrounding Buffalo Trace. So if you're like, man, I can never find a bottle. Maybe you finally find a bottle and you try it then it's like, oh, this is going to be so amazing. And then it just tastes like a really good bourbon. Then it's like, what the heck? Especially if you've already bought other like really expensive bourbons, those are going to be better than Buffalo Trace. Uh, like a $60 bourbon, four roses, small batch, four roses, single barrel. Those are going to be better than Buffalo Trace, but they're also a lot more expensive. So that's why there's so much hype around Buffalo Trace. But if you're not thinking of it that way, you're just thinking, well, I never hear people talk about Four Roses Small Batch, but I hear a bunch of people talk about Buffalo Trace. Then you're going to be super disappointed when you try the Buffalo Trace because you think it's going to be better than that. And that is where most Buffalo Trace haters, in my opinion, are made. I think a lot of people have their hopes let down, and that's where they start to really strongly dislike Buffalo Trace. And that is one of the reasons that I try to get the point across that it is a great bourbon for the price, but that's as far as it goes. It's a great bourbon for the price. I really like it. I really like the distillery as a whole. I like having to hunt down their whiskeys. I like the little bit of a scavenger hunt, thrill of the chase feeling that you get from it, but it's not amazing. It's not like if you don't like whiskey, you'll just love Buffalo Trace. That's not the case. I do think it's good for beginners who are going to be able to eventually like most whiskeys, but it's not going to be if you don't like whiskey at all, you'll never like whiskey. You're going to try Buffalo Trace and just think it's amazing. And so that is one of the driving factors behind people disliking Buffalo Trace. And once again, I get where those people are coming from. If they have been misled considerably and then they buy it and they don't think it's that great i totally get where you're coming from but there's a newer argument that's kind of surfacing and i think it's pretty interesting and it's a lot of um, the people who are more involved in the hobby and i get where they're coming from as well but i want to address it from my angle because i disagree with them there is a growing debate that buffalo trace is basically bad because they have such a stranglehold on the bourbon industry and they could it's kind of like Amazon where they're putting the mom and pop shops out of business or putting their the in-person stores out of business Buffalo Trace they're saying it's putting uh, craft distilleries out of business essentially now I understand the idea that one whiskey could become so popular or one type of product could become so popular the the company could become so big that they could put other craft companies out of business. I get that. But I disagree with the idea that the hype behind Buffalo Trace is is a problem for craft distilleries. And there's a couple reasons for that. The first is that Buffalo Trace is an excellent beginner bourbon, okay? What I mean by that is, sure, somebody might come to the hobby hunting Buffalo Trace because they were told that it was good. 
and they might spend that first $30 that they have in their pocket on Buffalo Trace. And that might be all they buy for six months if they're just getting into it. I totally get it. That could have gone into a craft bottle for sure. But it's such a good beginner bourbon or beginner whiskey in general, in my opinion, that I think it's worth it because they're going to try it. And I've had a few people, especially folks that comment on my videos, say, yeah, you're right. This made me like whiskey. This got me into whiskey. And so from there, I think they're doing the craft industry a favor because they're actually getting new people into the hobby. And those people, most of the time, are not going to stop at Buffalo Trace. That's how you get into the whole thing. It's what got me into the hobby, and I buy everything I see now, everything I can afford to buy. And so for that reason, it's almost a good thing for the craft distilleries. And there's a couple other reasons as well that I think it's kind of a good thing for the craft distilleries. The next thing is that Buffalo Trace, as I just mentioned, is hard to find. So even so, there's like a couple ways that this could play out. The first could be you buy the Buffalo Trace and then you like it. It gets you into whiskey and then it's hard to find. So you start playing around with other stuff or you hear about Buffalo Trace. You can't find it. You can't find it. You can't find it. And you finally say, let's try something different. And then you get into whiskey the same way. And then you start buying craft stuff once again. But the long-term person who tried Buffalo Trace, who likes Buffalo Trace, like myself, for example, who likes Buffalo Trace, enjoys drinking it, buys it whenever he sees it, they're still going to get into the other whiskeys most of the time. Very few people are ever going to get into whiskey, try one brand, get into the hobby, and just stick with that brand, especially when that brand is hard to find. And so a lot of folks are going to come into the hobby and then be like, well, now I'm into it. I want to try other stuff. And most people know a distillery isn't magical. I don't need to just buy Buffalo Trace stuff. There could easily be a distillery just as good as Buffalo Trace out there, and I'm going to try to find it. And for that reason, it's a good thing for craft distilleries. Once again, I wouldn't be buying the craft whiskeys that I would buy if I didn't have Buffalo Trace from the get-go to get me into whiskey. So I think it honestly can have a good impact. And does it have some negative impact? Absolutely. There are definitely some folks out there who will probably only buy Buffalo Trace. There's definitely that bit of money that people spend on Buffalo Trace because of the hype and they don't spend on other things. But overall, I think it's a net benefit to just the whiskey drinking, bourbon drinking, or I guess distillery community, the people selling it. I think it's an overall benefit that there's something that popular. Think about the Conor McGregor's with MMA. Did Conor McGregor beat a bunch of other MMA fighters? And did he also, was he a mean to all those MMA fighters? Did Conor McGregor take the spotlight from a lot of smaller MMA fighters? Absolutely. But did he bring a ton of people to consume the sport, to watch the sport? Did he make it pretty mainstream on social media to watch the UFC or to watch boxing or to watch any form of martial arts? Yes, he did. He did a great job of that, in my opinion. And so was Conor McGregor bad to the guy that he was beating in that moment? Probably. Probably wasn't great for that guy. But was he a net benefit to the rest of the sport and even probably to that guy who got paid because he got to fight Conor McGregor and he got paid for it? Absolutely. Now, I'm not trying to debate wages of UFC fighters or anything. That's just my metaphor to say even if Buffalo Trace grosses much higher sales, much higher revenue than the rest of these distilleries, that doesn't mean it's causing detriment to the rest of the distilleries. In my opinion, it's the spotlight that brings people into the hobby that then helps all of these distilleries. And I understand the idea that you can have a monopoly that like Amazon owns everything now, right? They own the world. This is a metaphor. Amazon does not own Buffalo Trace that I'm aware of, but Amazon owns the world. And I don't like that. I don't like that Amazon owns all these things and, and they're putting everybody out of business. But the thing is, this is just whiskey. This isn't Buffalo Trace growing and, and buying out these small distilleries just to put them out of business. There's a lot more to the politics of it in terms of Amazon and monopolies and that sort of thing than I see going on in the bourbon industry so that that's a, my longish spiel about this whole thing is that in my opinion buffalo trace is good for the bourbon for the whiskey industry and that is based mostly on my experience because i have given money to countless distilleries because of buffalo trace i have bought countless different types of whiskey because of buffalo trace which was the first whiskey as i've mentioned previously the first whiskey that I tried and I tasted it and I was like, that tasted good. And that's what got me into whiskey. 
Now, there is something that I want to address. So I've already tried to make it ex- extremely clear that Buffalo Trace is a good whiskey for the price, and, but should not be seen as this like magical miracle whiskey like some people do see it. But the next thing that I want to talk about is Buffalo Trace being overpriced. Because I've had this commented on my TikTok pretty regularly recently. And I want to address that to make it clear to people. I do not recommend spending more than $35, maybe $40 on Buffalo Trace. I personally would not buy a bottle of Buffalo Trace for more than $40. I don't think it is worth much more than $40, if more than $40 at all. Because I've had some people who have commented either, I bought it for $65 and I didn't like it at all, or uh, the the only one I can find near me is $40. In my opinion, don't buy it then. Buy something different. You're going to probably like the something different more if you're spending $40. There are absolutely whiskeys out there for more than $40 that I don't think are better than Buffalo Trace, but there's definitely whiskeys out there that I think are better than Buffalo Trace for more than $40. Off the top of my head, I'm pretty sure Four Roses single Single Barrel runs about $45, and I like it more than Buffalo Trace. So don't go spending crazy money on Buffalo Trace. And that is what breeds people who hate Buffalo Trace is they try it and it doesn't live up to the hype and it never could. And I totally get where they're coming from. Something else I forgot to mention is I mentioned how it is the preferred flavor profile for a lot of people, at least in my experience, a lot of people that I've talked to. They love the brown sugar. They love the vanilla. They love those sorts of sweet notes. That's also not everybody's flavor, favorite flavor palette. And I've had people message me that before and say, I bought Buffalo Trace and I thought it tasted terrible. And they'll be like actual whiskey drink. Like this isn't just somebody who doesn't like whiskey and says, well, it tasted like whiskey. And it's like, well, yes, it's still a whiskey. Now, these are people who drink whiskey or bourbon specifically. And they message me and they're like, I think Buffalo Trace tastes terrible. And I, like, I don't know if they're trying to argue me or if they're just telling me that for my information. But when they do, I'm like... I'm sorry. Yeah, that that stinks. That's just not your flavor profile. It's no different than if you don't like I actually had a TikTok about this the other day. It's no different than if you don't like a certain topping on your pizza. Some people absolutely love pineapple on their pizza. They think it's the best thing since pizza was created. They love it so much. And then other people absolutely despise it. And it's just a matter of opinion. So the people out there who don't like the flavor profile Buffalo Trace, they become double Buffalo Trace haters most of the time because not only did it not live up to the hype, they think it tastes bad. And then they really, really hate it because they're like, everybody says this is good, this tastes terrible. It's a matter of opinion. But I totally get where those people are coming from because it could never, once again, it could never live up to the hype that people hype it up to. So the last thing that I want to close out with is that not everybody likes Buffalo Trace. It's just whiskey. At the end of the day, it's just a good whiskey for $27. And I love the brand. I love their marketing. I love what they have going on with the hunt that I have to chase it down. I personally find it exhilarating and I don't let it annoy me too much. And that is just my opinion. And if you don't like Buffalo Trace, that's totally fine. But I don't think it's overall this big bad boogeyman that people have been making it out to be on social media. And I think this episode is helpful for a lot of the folks who hear me talk about it so much and hear how much I like it for me to really explain my thought process, to explain why I like Buffalo Trace. There are other whiskeys that I like more than Buffalo Trace. You're going to want to make sure you're following me on TikTok and Instagram in the coming weeks because I'm going to be talking about all of those whiskeys that I like more than Buffalo Trace or some of them that I like almost as much as Buffalo Trace. And I'm going to be finding the best ones and ranking them all. But there are for that price. And something that I didn't want to leave out and I do want to touch on is I always say Buffalo Trace is a great whiskey for $27. But I just want everybody to realize what I'm saying there. It's a great whiskey for $27. That does not mean that it's going to taste like a high-end whiskey that you would order at a bar or at a cocktail bar. That does not mean it's going to compare to your Macallan if you're into scotch, you know, your 18-year Macallan. I'm not saying that at all. I'm not saying it's going to compare to the expensive bourbons or the expensive whiskeys. I'm just saying it's good for the price. And I think a lot of people are saying that as well, but it gets overhyped. So if anything, I hope I come across as more of a centrist with an admitted bias towards Buffalo Trace. I love it. It has a special place in my heart. It's one of the first whiskeys I liked, and I love the flavor profile of it. 
but I would be the first guy to admit that Four Roses Single Barrel, better than Buffalo Trace. If I had, if somebody was going to give me a free bottle and it was either going to be Buffalo Trace or Four Roses Single Barrel, I'm going for the Four Roses Single Barrel. I love it. So I don't want to give off the wrong impression that I think Buffalo Trace is this miracle drink. And that's what I want to end with. So if you've never had Buffalo Trace and you can find it for less than $35, maybe less than $40, depending on how badly you want to try it, go for it. Do not expect it to be a miracle whiskey. Do not expect it to be so amazing. I would anticipate, as long as it is your flavor profile, I would anticipate that you're going to really like the value that you got for the money but you're not going to completely go bananas that it's just the best whiskey that you've ever had in your entire life. But once again, if you want to see some of those whiskeys that I think are better than Buffalo Trace in the same price range, follow me on Instagram at whiskey underscore noobs or on TikTok at whiskey noobs podcast. I'm probably going to be posting them on both of those. And you can see some of these whiskeys that I do think are better than Buffalo Trace in that same price range. So, Go ahead and check those out. Try those whiskeys. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know your opinion on all this Buffalo Trace argument. But hopefully that helped clear things up for everybody who's like, this is one of those guys who's super into Buffalo Trace. Hopefully you understand why. Why I like the brand so much. Also, they've just been around for a really long time. They're just a good brand, in my opinion. And I don't think they're causing harm to the bourbon industry like some people do. I don't think those people are misguided. I just disagree with the way they're looking at it. That's all. So hopefully that helped clear everything up. But that's all I've got for this episode today. So as always, I will leave you guys with learn to drink, drink to learn. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Whiskey Noobs. If you like the show, please make sure that you tell anyone you know who you think would be interested in the hobby or in the podcast. That way we can help to spread the word and continue to grow. Please also make sure to review the show on Apple Podcasts and share our posts on Instagram at whiskey underscore noobs or on TikTok at whiskey noobs podcast. Uh, it only takes a couple of minutes and it really does a lot to help spread the word and grow the podcast. Also, there is an email list for the show. If you'd like to join, you can just send an email to whiskey noobs podcast at gmail.com and in the subject line put email list. I will add you to the list and then you'll be updated every month with the whiskeys that we will be drinking on the show throughout the month. That way you can drink right along with us and see if you're getting the same notes. Once again, thank you so much for listening to the show. The Whiskey Noobs podcast does not support underage or otherwise irresponsible consumption of alcohol.